in the previous video we have solved for the barrel uh, for the transverse magnetic modes in the barrel plate waveguide uh, we have obtained the longitudinal electric field component EZ and from the longitudinal electric field component we obtain the transverse electric and magnetic field components but actually from the point of view we are not interested only in the electric and magnetic field we are interested in the power which is transferred from one point to another point inside the waveguide so in this video we are going to study the time average passing power of transverse magnetic modes in barrel plate waveguide effectively the time average power it can be obtained from a pointing vector as b naught equal half the real of e cross h conjugate and because we are interested in the power propagating in this direction so it would be e cross h conjugate dot z such that we are taking the z component of the pointing vector and this would be representing the power density so to obtain the total power we are integrating on the cross section of the waveguide the cross section of the waveguide would be dx dy and x here is from 0 to w and y from 0 to d okay the field components that we already obtained for tm mode the longitudinal field component ez is a multiplied by sine n by y over d e to the power minus g beta z hx is j omega epsilon over kc an cosine n by y over d e to the power minus g beta z and ey equals minus g beta over kc an cosine n by y over d e to the power minus g beta z and ex and hy are zero so in this case e cross h conjugate we have two components here ey and ez and we have only one h field component effectively ey cross hx would be uh, minus z so this would be in z direction but ez cross hx would be in y direction so ez cross hz will not contribute a power propagating in z direction this means that this cross product would include only EY cross HX EY cross HX conjugate and by taking the conjugate e to the power minus G beta Z will be eliminated here we have minus J and this would be conjugate so it would be minus J minus J minus J it would be minus 1 okay and EY cross H conjugate dot Z so this minus EY cross H conjugate this would be minus Z so minus Z dot Z would be minus we have minus of real the integration of EY H X conjugate DY DX by multiplying this we have already minus here, so minus minus would be positive. This a n squared omega epsilon beta, and because beta can be real or imaginary, so we are going to take real beta k c squared, and the remaining part is cosine squared n by y over d dy the integration with x x is constant so it would be w directly w this cosine squared n by y over d 
will be d over 2. How comes this exists? <laughs> you can prove it. It's very simple. Okay. So, this would be if n is greater than 0, it would be d over 2. So, we have d over 2, and we already have 2, so it would be d over 4. If n equals 0, this would be constant, and in this case, it would be d. So, it would be w, real beta, omega epsilon, d over 2 kc squared, a n squared. So, if n is greater than 0, the value of the transmitted power would be W real beta omega epsilon D over 4 kc squared multiplied by the amplitude of EZ AN squared. Okay? If N equals 0, it would be the same, but instead of 4, it would be 2. And it should be noted that the time average passing power is positive and non zero when beta is real. And beta is real if the frequency is greater than the cutoff frequency. So if the frequency is greater than the cutoff frequency, this parallel plate waveguide will transfer power in T MMOs. Below the cutoff frequency, it will not transfer the power in T MMOs. Okay? On the other hand, what is a conductor loss? Characteristic in the power transmitted, I am aware about the losses. Already we have discussed the dielectric loss, but also we have conductor loss. Conductor loss is mainly due to the finite conductivity of the conducting plane of the barrel plate of that. All the above analysis, we were assuming that these plates are perfectly conductive. But practically, they are not perfectly electric conductors. So, in this case, we can calculate the attenuation coefficient due to the conductor loss, alpha c, as the power loss due to the conductor loss over 2 of the power transmitted B0. So, it is required now to determine the power losses due to the conductor loss. Effectively, the power loss due to the conductor loss for one plate is given by half the surface resistance Rs multiplied by the surface current Gs squared, and this Gs squared is integrated along the width of the plate. And because we have two plates, the power loss would be multiplied by two. So it was originally half R S I squared, and we have one plate in the uh, one lower plate and one upper plate. So we have two multiplied by half R S I squared. Okay. The surface current density G S is effectively equal the magnitude of the surface current equals the magnitude of the tangential magnetic field. And already we have one component of the tangential magnetic field HX. We have magnetic field tangential to the plate HX. Should be noted that we have two directions for the tangential component for the plate. X component and Z component. Fortunately, in the present case, we have only HX. So, the losses in the present case is due to HX only. And the magnitude of the surface current is the magnitude of the magnetic field or the tangential magnetic field. But the direction of the tangential current is normal to the direction of the magnetic field. So, if the magnetic field in X direction the corresponding surface current is in Z direction. Actually, in calculating the losses, we are don't caring about we are don't care about what is the direction of the current. We are caring only about the magnitude of the current. 
So the magnitude of the current here is the magnitude of HX. I'm talking about the magnitude. So when talking about the magnitude, every J is removed. And e to the power minus g beta z as a magnitude unity. So we are talking about the magnitude of this item, which is omega epsilon over kc a n cosine n by y over d. All right. Now by taking this value and making it squared and integrating with respect to x and putting the value. Of y equal d, so this would be cosine n by cosine n by is unity, maybe minus one, maybe one, but if I'm talking about square, it would be one. So we have omega squared epsilon squared over k c squared a n squared multiplied by unity, okay, and integrating with respect to x. From 0 to w, it would be that omega squared, epsilon squared over kc squared, a n squared. All right. And here we have 2 and 2, so this R s. Where R s is the surface resistivity or the surface resistance of the conductor, which is determined as the square root of omega mu over 2 sigma, where sigma is the conductivity of the material of the parallel plane. Alright, so this is the power loss. Now, by knowing the power loss and the transmitted power, we can determine the attenuation coefficient due to the conductor loss. So, the attenuation coefficient due to the conductor loss equals BL over 2B0. And already we have proved that BL equals omega squared epsilon squared RSW over KC squared AN squared. And we also proved that the transmitted power for n greater than zero equals this term. For n equals zero, it would be the same, but without this four, it would be two. Okay. Now we are going to use these two formulas to determine the attenuation coefficient due to the conductor loss alpha c. So alpha c in this case it would be this value over this value for n greater than zero which can be simplified as 2 omega epsilon r s over beta d and omega epsilon can be represented as k over eta so alpha c equals 2 k r s over beta theta d never per meter for n greater than zero for n equal zero would be this value over two of this value so can be simplified as r surface over eta d effectively when n equal zero k would equal beta and already we have factor of 2, so it would be our surface over eta b. This is the conductor loss for, uh, uh, sorry, this is the attenuation due to the conductor loss for the transverse magnetic mode in parallel plate wave belt. Okay. The total attenuation coefficient, we already said that the attenuation coefficient due to the dielectric loss equals k squared tan delta over 2 beta. And we have proven that the attenuation coefficient due to the conductor loss alpha c would be 2 k r s over beta eta d for n greater than 0 or R s over eta d for n equal 0. So the total attenuation coefficient alpha would be alpha d plus alpha c. So if n equal greater than 0, it would be this relation. If n 
equal zero to be this relation. Okay, this is the total attenuation coefficient or total attenuation constant due to both the dielectric loss and the conductor loss. Okay.